We now return to Shakespeare in the Park. Will all great Neptune's oceans wash this blood clean from my hand? No. This my hand. Hey, whoa, whoa. All right. That's enough of that. That can't be good. Hey fellow masters, we're pretty much all done with these sidebars. So now we need to do the top bar and the bottom bar. And we're gonna start with the top bar first because there's quite a bit of machining that has to go on with that. So let's get right into it. Let's see what that entails. And as always, let's screw up together. This is the piece that we're gonna be making. This is the top bar. And it has a couple important features. First are these notches here that actually correspond with the sidebars. And the next is this sort of backrest that the wax will sit up against. It's not a complicated piece to make, but it will take some time to set up the various cuts. So let's get to it. Like last video, we start here at the chop saw. I'm going to use the rest of this two by six. Um, I'd probably get 10 bars or so out of it. So I need 20 ultimately. That's not a problem. There's more wood around here. so. Let's get started with this. Now, ideally, when you make these bars, um, you would use like a one by 10 or a one by eight, uh, because one, the thickness is correct to begin with, uh, three quarters of an inch. But also, the, uh, the mill quality is a whole lot better. This is just a framing stud. So I've got to do just a little bit of cleanup on these. Um, I think I'm just going to put them through the planer and uh, smooth them out a bit before I make the individual bars. <laughs> So now, after all that ridiculousness, we have something that resembles, you know, a one by, you know, whatever, one by four. Um, do we have to do this? No. Uh, I didn't have any material on hand. Um, could I have bought some? Absolutely. But uh, cheap, lazy, ignorant, take your pick. I didn't do it. Um, I didn't end up using the two by sixes either. That material was uh, stupidly dense and uh, it was just taking forever so i just ended up using just all two by fours so anyway now that we have this material milled down cut we can now make the individual bars we're gonna cut those to width inch and a sixteenth and i'll meet you again at the table saw Some of the knots in the material did play havoc on some of the edge quality, but um, some of the machining should take care of that. I don't think it'll be a big deal. I suppose we'll find out. First thing we're going to cut is a quarter inch deep groove down the center of this little board. And that's going to be in preparation for this little backrest. So to make the next cut, I've uh, laid out the dimensions of the notch that we need to make. And this little dot here is how deep we have to go. We could do it with a stack dado, um, 
So that's not how we're going to do it. We're going to do it in multiple passes, but it shouldn't take too long because we're not going very deep and we're not going very far. So um, I just got to figure out how I'm going to do that. Okay, so here's how we're going to make the next cut. Got our miter gauge, squeaky. Um, push the workpiece against this for a stop block. Push forward to make the first cut, come back, push towards the fence just a little bit. Next cut, rinse and repeat until we hit this next stop block. And that's going to be the final pass. And that'll make our final cut. And so long as everything's tight against the miter gauge and the blocks, it should, mind you, should come out okay. <laughs> Well, it looks like we screwed up. We got it right. Cool beans. Um, this has to happen on both ends of every bar. So give me a hot minute and we'll be right back. Next, we're going to make this little wing piece. First cut we're going to make is a quarter inch deep. It's going to go around this uh, poorly drawn line. Now that we have this groove in here, we need to remove the material on this bar right here. And that's gonna let it, this little wing is actually what's gonna sit on the side of the hive box. So in order to do that, I've got that stop block uh, and that miter gauge. And we're gonna just kind of cut these the same way we cut those notches. We don't need two stop blocks because we're going right to the end of the piece. And you'll see what that means in a second. You can see that the saw blade isn't flat, so it leaves these peaks and valleys. It's not too, too important on the sides, but I would like to clean that up a little bit. And uh, it's just a matter of using a chisel and I'm not going for something, you know, worthy of woodworking magazine here. I'm just trying to get the really high peaks out of there. That looks okay. Uh, there's another little sneaky thing we're going to do, um, with this anyway. So that should be okay. Time to do the rest. <laughs> Ultimately, you can see how these two components fit together. The notches we made on the side of the bar here correspond with the notch we made in the top of the sidebar. I'd say we're well on our way to creating the B space. Bees in space. So there's one more thing I want to do to this little, you know, kind of wing piece. And that's to put a slight chamfer on the side here. Now we could just leave it straight like this, but it is super difficult, especially with gloves on, to try to get a frame out of the hive with it straight like this. So what I've done in the past, and I've, you know, I've seen other frames like this, is there's a slight bevel here, and that way you can just kind of get your fingertip under there, lift up, and the rest of the, you know, it's about half of this that's still supporting the, uh, the weight of the frame in the box. Not that hard to do. Uh, let's go set it up on the chop saw. So here I have the chop saw set to 50 degrees and I have a very crudely drawn mark. So long as the piece is kind of against the back edge of that mark, then this is gonna make the identical clip every time. <laughs> So off camera, I clipped the corners and you can see what the end result is. And everything is very subtle, but it will make 
lifting these out of the hive much easier. Um, doesn't have to be done, but just my past experience, this works out for me. Doesn't have to be for everybody. But uh, let me finish up these and we're gonna go to the very final stage. So this is the top bar complete. I think it came out okay. You know, we're not gonna win any awards for it, but uh, it's gonna do the trick. For sure, for sure. So I just received in my electronic mailbox a message saying that bees will arrive next weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday. So I've ended this procrastination none too soon. Um, we should be okay. Um, frames are looking good. But just like going outside without pants, uh, it can be done. I wouldn't recommend it. These frames need a bottom um, to help support the wax. That was a bad analogy, and I retract nothing. The bottom bar is probably the easiest thing that we're going to do on this whole frame, so uh, that's not going to take too long. Let's get to it. The bottom bar is essentially just a thin piece of wood, three quarters wide by three eighths thick, and it's 17 and three quarters wide. And then there's a quarter inch deep cut down the middle, and that's to support the wax. So that's a frame all complete. Yet, I feel like I'm forgetting something. There's a few holes that need to be added. We can do that at a later time. Oh yeah, let's go do that. This is a really nice Reliant drill press. And I have um, sitting on the base is a slot mortising kit that uh, we'll have to eventually demonstrate. It's a little beefy and a little difficult to set up into the shop for something as mundane as two one eighth holes. So instead we're gonna use tiny. So these are the two holes that we need to add and therefore a couple of support pins. Now, in order to keep this somewhat consistent, I have over here a very crude jig and crude is very polite. Essentially on this top lock, fits that notch and I have a reference line and we drill, move the piece down to the next block, keep it on that reference line and drill the next hole. And these don't have to be super precise, but it will keep it somewhat consistent. Wow. That's one sexy frame, right? <whistles> I don't remember adding that in there. Anyway, that's all the components done. Uh, now what we need to do is do the final assembly. So they can't just free float like this. We're going to add some glue, brads, and I've got a little jig to do that with a much better jig than the one we just used. So let's get to it. So what you see before you is a jig I made. I didn't invent it. Um, I think I got it out of a book. But this is going to be the guy that we use to put our frames together. So let me show you um, what everything here is all about. So here's the base of the jig itself and the sidebars are going to go down these little slots in between these two you know, fingers. And once that's in place, put this little block in. This little block goes in and they have a little bit of wiggle room. And then finally, this piece with a hinge on it goes in. And with the bars in there, there's going to be enough pressure that these are going to clamp everything together. And then we can uh, glue everything up and uh, let them cook for a while until they're dry. Put the bar on. 
crossbar, mallet. Those bottom bars were a debacle. I ended up having to take the clamp out because the way the bars were sitting inside the jig, I couldn't flex the bars enough to make the bottom uh, piece flush with really either side. So that's it, weird. I've never had that happen before. Of course, I had to film it, but it's going to work out. Um, but these are glued up. They just got to cook for an hour or so, and then I'm ready for the next step. Oh, yeah. We had to do five more of these, too. So that's the frames 100% done. They're nice and strong, and they have to be. They need to support, like, 10 pounds. Once the wax, the honey, you know, eggs, larvae, the bees themselves are crawling on this thing, it's going to be, like, 10 or more pounds. It's a lot of weight, actually. Um, and we could put this in the hive right now like this, and the bees will fill this whole area with wax, draw it out to make the honeycomb. Uh, but that would take a really, really long time. So what we're gonna do is help the bees out by putting wax in here. It's called foundation, and we're gonna do that right now. So this is your standard wax foundation. It's just a very thin piece of wax, and we have like wax paper in the back to keep it from sticking to the other sheets. Um, very thin and it's kind of held together with these wires and these would go in the frame. So the way this works is we have our bottom groove in the frame that we made. We have kind of like this top rest piece. The wax would fit into this bottom groove and then the top with these longer pieces of wire would sit up against this backrest on the top. And here's one of the offcuts from this frame. And what you would do is you put this back in there and you tack that in place and that would hold the frame. You know, this would this wouldn't be free floating and be in the groove, but this would hold the wax in. And that's all well and good. And that's what I used to do until now. Let me show you. Quite recently I discovered this stuff. Big old foundation. I don't know, maybe 10 times the thickness, already drawn out for the bees, made entirely of wax. Um, I'm sure these are for a special type of frame. Um, I didn't really look that much into it. I probably should have, but I didn't. Um, but I'm gonna use it in my frames, just the same, holding in with the pins. Um, I'm pretty sure the bees will do whatever they gotta do to keep it in there. Um, but that's gonna save them a ton of time. Look how thick that is. Okay, so I think it's just a matter of sliding this wax in. There we go. And what I forgot to show you in the last kind of demonstration about that thinner wax is that there's these pins, they stick in through the side and they also help stabilize the wax. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Just poke these pins in and that should, in my mind, be enough to stabilize this wax long enough for the bees to do their thing. And they're gonna do whatever they want with this. I mean, 
they might take wax from this frame and put it in another frame. Who knows? They, they got their own agenda. Well, there it is, ready for the beehive. I think this new wax I'm experimenting with will work out well. Um, I'm pretty confident that the bees are going to work around it to make it fit properly. And the only thing to do now is put these in the hive and then dump a bunch of bees in there. And that's where I'm going to meet you next time. I'm not sure if that's going to be a full blown episode or not, but that's this weekend that's happening. So sometime after that, I'll drop that video. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you're enjoying what you see on the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon for any notifications from future videos. See you on the next one.